Okay, ready to dive into something pretty amazing. I'm ready. Let's go. All right. So we're talking about a discovery. Uh, it takes us way back to the age of dinosaurs. Oh, wow. Okay. We're talking fossilized tadpole. Okay. But not just any tadpole. This one is 16 centimeters long. That's over six inches. Huge. Yeah. And it's the oldest one ever found. Wow. That's incredible. I know, right? So 16 centimeters, that's got to be like the size of a... Uh, yeah, it's a massive. I mean, like a small lizard almost. Oh, yeah, you're not kidding. That's amazing. And the oldest one ever found. It really is mind-blowing. It is. To think about it. And get this, it was just found completely by chance. Really? Yeah, on a ranch in Patagonia. No kidding. Argentina, during a dinosaur dig. Oh, wow. What a what a find. Talk about a lucky break. <laughs> yeah, like a needle in a haystack. <laughs> totally. And so they were looking for dinosaurs, and they found this giant tadpole. And what makes this fossil even more special, though, is its amazing level of preservation. We're not just talking bones here. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, this fossil includes, like, details like eyes, wow. nerves, and even the cartilage skeleton that supported its gills. It's like a perfect snapshot. It's incredible. It's like a window into the past. You can really picture it, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. So we have this giant, super old tadpole. Yeah. What can it actually teach us about frogs and their evolution? Well... For one thing, I mean, it really helps us answer some of the big questions about how long frogs have even been around. Oh, okay. Yeah, and how they've changed over time. Right. This tadpole belonged to a species called Notobotrachus dejustoi. Okay. And despite being millions of years old, it looks surprisingly similar to tadpoles we see today. Really? Yeah. So like that classic tadpole shape, the round body, the long tail. Yeah, exactly. It's been working for a really long time. It's classic for a reason. Yeah. So, but why has the tadpole body plan remained so consistent, though, over millions of years? What makes it such a successful strategy? Well, that's a great question. And this fossil gives us some clues. Tadpoles are just incredibly adaptable, you know. They can live in water, breathing through gills, until they transform into air-breathing adults. Mm. And this two-stage life cycle lets them thrive in all sorts of environments, and that may explain why they've survived multiple mass extinction events. Never that wiped it. out so many other species. Wow. Yeah, they're really resilient little creatures. It's like having a superpower, being able to live in two completely different worlds. Mm -hmm. It makes you wonder, though, if this dual lifestyle played a role in their ability to outlast even the dinosaurs. That's an interesting thought. Yeah. It's certainly possible. Yeah. I mean, and this fossil, it gives us a rare chance to study the anatomy of an ancient tadpole in detail. Okay. For example, the uh, well-preserved hyobranchial skeleton, the structure that supported its gills, mm -hmm. it can tell us about its diet and lifestyle. Wait, hold on. We can actually figure out what this little guy was eating 161 million years ago uh -huh. just by looking at its gill bones? Exactly. How? Well, by analyzing the structure of that hyobranchial skeleton and looking for any like wear patterns, scientists can infer what kind of food the tadpole was filtering from the water. That's amazing how much information we can extract from a single fossil. It's like being a detective, piecing together clues from the past. It really is. But I have to ask, what about the adult frog this tadpole would have grown into? Did it look anything like the frogs we know today? Well, based on the fossil evidence, the adult frogs of this species were about the same size as the tadpole. What, so the adult frog wasn't even that much bigger than the tadpole? Yeah. That's pretty unusual, right? It is. In most frog species, there's a pretty big size difference between the tadpole and the adult. Right. But Notobotrachus digestoi, it seems to have had a different growth pattern. So this species was just basically a giant tadpole that grew up to be like a slightly bigger giant tadpole. Pretty much, yeah. You could say that. Wow, okay. And the fact that this fossil, like, it, it captures the tadpole in those late stages of metamorphosis. Yeah. It gives us a really unique glimpse into that crucial stage of its life cycle. It's incredible how one fossil can just reveal so much about a species from millions of years ago. I know. It's really amazing. It really makes you appreciate the power of paleontology. Absolutely. But um, shifting gears a bit, I've always been fascinated by just the sheer variety of frogs we see today. Oh, yeah. From tiny, like, colorful dart frogs to those massive bullfrogs that can, like, eat birds. I know, right? They're so diverse. What drives that incredible diversity in, 
in frog species though? It's all about adaptation. Okay. Over millions of years, frogs have evolved to survive in a huge range of habitats. Yeah. I mean, you can find them in rainforests, deserts, uh, high altitudes, oh. and even below sea level. Really? And yeah. And each species has developed unique characteristics that, you know, help it thrive in its own specific environment. So it's like nature's been running this giant experiment. Yeah, exactly. With frogs. Yeah. Coming up with all sorts of like variations and adaptations. Yeah, I like that analogy. That's a great way to think about it. Cool. Yeah. So some frogs, like tree frogs, mm -hmm. are adapted for life in the trees. Mm -hmm. Others, like burrowing frogs, live underground. Yeah. Some have uh, developed camouflage to blend in. Right. While others have like bright colors to warn predators that they're poisonous. Exactly. Yeah. They've got all sorts of amazing survival strategies. It's amazing how they've managed to fill so many different niches in the ecosystem. But thinking about all these different adaptations makes you wonder, though, are there any common threads that connect all these diverse frog species back to their ancient ancestors? Absolutely. Although there have been variations and specializations within different frog lineages, the um, fundamental principles of their biology have remained remarkably consistent over time. Like what? Well, their two-stage life cycle, their adaptable nature, their ability to thrive in various environments, these are all hallmarks of frogs, you know? Yeah. And we see those echoed in this ancient tadpole fossil. So this little guy isn't just a cool relic from the past. That's right. He's a living link to the frogs we see hopping around today. It shows us that despite all the changes that have occurred over millions of years, there's a, like, core set of characteristics that have allowed frogs to flourish and diversify across the globe. Precisely. And this discovery helps us trace those characteristics back to the very roots of frog evolution. It gives us a deeper appreciation for the incredible journey these creatures have taken over time. But I have to ask, with all the environmental challenges that we're facing today, are modern frogs able to adapt as well as their ancestors did? It's kind of worrying to think that even though frogs have you know, survived so much. Yeah. They're facing a whole new set of threats now. It is a concern. Habitat loss, climate change, pollution, disease. Um, mm. It's all impacting frog populations around the world. And these are complex, you know, interconnected problems. They pose a serious challenge to the survival of many frog species. It's almost ironic. Frogs have weathered like mass extinctions, but yeah. now they're facing threats brought on by us, by human activity. So what can we do to protect these amazing creatures, though? Is there, like, any hope for their future? Oh, there's always hope. There's always hope. And there are many things that, that we can do to help. Um, supporting organizations that are working to protect frog habitats, I think that's that's yeah. crucial. Yeah. Um, you know, reducing our own environmental impact by making, you know, conscious choices in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. Even small actions can have a ripple effect. And just, you know, spreading awareness about the importance of amphibians and the threats they face is essential. It sounds like we need to act quickly if we want to make sure that uh, frogs continue to be a part of our planet's, like, tapestry of life. Yeah, definitely. This ancient tadpole discovery really highlights the importance of understanding the past and using that knowledge to inform our actions in the present. Absolutely. This fossil is uh, its a powerful reminder that the natural world is constantly changing, evolving, but it's also incredibly fragile. By studying the past, we can learn valuable lessons about resilience, about adaptation, the interconnectedness of life. And, and by applying those lessons, we can make more informed decisions about how to protect the uh, incredible biodiversity of our planet. This deep dive has been an incredible journey. Uh, from the Jurassic period to the present day. We've explored the fascinating world of ancient tadpoles, marveled at the enduring power of evolution, and confronted the challenges facing frogs today. And it all started with, you know, a chance discovery on a ranch in Argentina. Yeah. It just goes to show that uh, the most unexpected places can hold the keys to unlocking these profound insights, you know, about our planet's history and the life it supports. This fossil has given us a glimpse into the distant past, reminding us of the interconnectedness of life on Earth and the importance of um, you know, protecting that delicate balance of our ecosystems. If this ancient tadpole could survive alongside dinosaurs, right. imagine what other secrets might be waiting to be discovered. And imagine what those discoveries might teach us, you know, about ourselves and our yeah. place in, in the grand scheme of things. There's a whole world of wonder out there just waiting to be explored. And that's what the deep dive is all about, exploring those wonders, sharing the thrill of discovery, and inspiring a sense of awe and responsibility for the natural world. 
If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating deep dives into the world of science and nature. Until next time, stay curious.